What's going on, man? What's going on, Anthony? I appreciate you coming on, man. Oh, man. Hey, I appreciate another opportunity to share the story. Get it out there, you know what I'm saying? Push the brand. It's, um, you do have an interesting story. You definitely do. Um, and we're going to talk about everything. Okay. <laughs> cool. Gonna, um, so you're up in New Jersey, right? Yeah. What part of Jersey? <clears throat> Camden. Yeah, so you're in Camden. So, okay. That's awesome. Uh, Camden, Camden has seen some hard times. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's, it's probably one of the worst cities in America at one point. Yeah. <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah. So how is Candom now compared to you growing up? Uh, it got its years, you know what I'm saying? Some years is like back in the day. Some some things is different, you know what I mean? Right. You know, up and down. So is it on the come up or is it not? It's just stuck? Nah, it's coming up for the better. A lot I'm saying it's a lot more uh, businesses opening up, you know what I'm right. saying? A lot more opportunities. For people, I think a lot more people more uh, woke than how I was coming up. You know what I'm saying? Like the youngest coming up now, they right. got different opportunities that we didn't have that was available back then. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of them, it's not, it's not forced to turn to the streets how I feel like 90% of us was back then. You know what I'm saying? Was, we all became part of the, of the environment. I think, too, technology is giving people access to more information. Exactly. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's that cell phone has become like the everything. That's like the Encyclopedia oh. Brown back in the days, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> that's man, that's everything. The phone is the computer. Like that's the it, business. It really is. It really is, man. And so growing up in that, how where, where did you where was your space to play and how did you grow up in Camden? Like what would that what would that look like? Oh man, my space to play. It pretty much was limited. Like I started out, um, I was a football. That was everything. Football was my everything. You know what I mean? Like, right. I, was, I was the best amongst our group growing up. You know what I'm saying? So like, football was was our was my thing, my love. But it was more streets than that available. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I may we may play some street ball sometimes, but after that the streets take over. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's not too much outlets. It wasn't too many outlets for me to stay focused on the football. You know what I'm saying? It was more staying focused on the crime. And what took you there? What was that first time that, that took you there? What, to crime? Yeah. Oh, uh, it was a, after a football game one day. And um, that's when I, after the football game, you know, a friend of mine, he thought that what he was doing was helping me because we won the game. I was the star player. So he just wanted to put some extra money in my pocket. I probably was like 11 to 12. Yeah, by 11 to 12. And instead of the money, he gave me a few bags of drugs. You feel me? Right. And, but he gave it to me right why a customer was right there. So instead of him going in the pocket, giving me the 10, 15 hours that he was trying to give me for catching the winning touchdown or having the most touchdowns right gave me a couple bags and just said give it to this person and right there my life changed because when i gave those to that person they gave me back 10 15 dollars as far as i can remember and it was like it was a big smile for me because it's like this is what my dad gave me for the whole week where i got to spend three dollars a day at lunch and make this 10 to 15 dollars stretch right you feel me? but it was like damn i got this all in one walk from what I gave this lady. I remember it being a lady. In seconds. <laughs> in seconds. Yeah, it was like, damn. Like, so my mind always wondered, how the hell do I keep doing this? Like, how do it keep coming where I can get 10 or $15 in 10 seconds? You know what I'm saying? Compared to, you know, the allowance my dad was giving me. Right. How long, how, how long did that last for? Oh, man. It was pretty much, that was the light switch because from there I was curious. You know what I'm saying? So I kept seeking out how to how to make that happen again with what my friend just did for me. So, you know, I got to exploring, you know what I mean? Once a kid, once you put something in their mind, now they searching, you know what I mean? So 
as time went on, I got I got into the trade, catching charges at a young age. I caught my first charge. I was like 13. You get what I'm saying? So now it's really it's really coming up in me. I'm seeing the law enforcement. I'm catching cases. It's like, whoa, everything's happening real fast. Did you find it exciting? Yeah, I found it exciting. You know what I'm saying? Because when you're a kid, it's curiosity kills. You know what I'm saying? So I'm doing these things, and it's like, damn, everything around me from the growing ups to the to the younger kids like my age doing this. So I'm thinking this is where it's at. Like, damn, I got to find out how to be the best in this, how I felt like I was the best in football. Let me, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. now I'm up to this, trying to whatever. You know what I mean? All right. So you catch your first charge. What happens after, as you get older, how more deep do you fall into it? Oh, I got deeper by the day. You know what I mean? Like, after the first charge, it's like now it, it ain't stopped coming. You know what I'm saying? Like, I caught that first charge. I think it was, uh, yeah, it was for um, jury riding in a, in a stolen car with some friends. Jury ride, we get pulled over, I catch that charge. Then a few months later, I caught a weed charge. You know what I'm saying? I was probably like 14. I got caught with a bundle of weed. So it's like I'm constantly now I'm running in law enforcement. So after that, maybe I get on probation a few months down the line, I catch a crack charge. I mean, this is all juvenile stuff. So every time I catch a charge, the charge elevated. You know what I mean? Like I'm like, damn. And my mind is more, this was going on. This is the life right here. You know what I'm saying? Because now I'm always tuned in back from that first cell when I was about 11. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because at that point you 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 try to level up. Yeah, yeah, definitely trying to level try, up. Yeah, you try to level up and try to compete with the other heads in the block. And it's it's, it's pretty much a, a pissing contest of yo, who you know who can be the fucking best at this bad shit. Yes, that's real. <laughs> yeah, know, that's just real talk. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and if you're not trying to be the best at what you're doing, then you need to get played out. Exactly. And Cassie gonna be calling you a sucker, you're a punk, you'll get out of here. And you you don't want to walk away like that. No doubt. Yeah. You know? And so as that happened, you know, you're just you just kind of just you know kind of just messing around with some stuff and these charges are upgrading. Like when was it to the point that you actually went to jail for for you went to jail for a period of time, right? Mm-hmm. What 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 how did that happen? You know what? Let me put this live facing you too, so the people can see. What else? You know what I'm saying? See you asking questions. Stuff. And I can't really. So what we gotta do? All right, cool. All right. Hold on one second. I got you, man. Two, three, four. Don't worry, I'm gonna just get another two boxes. That way we'll be yeah, ahead we're, of the game. Right All right. I got you. Because when yours is already done. All right. Let me try to fix this one over here at least a little bit. I can't really get it. Um that's straight. I'm gonna just let them listen. Yeah, yeah. You feel me? You good. Here you go, bro. We're just gonna get them boxes. These we're gonna have to get boxes too. All right, I take care of that once I get done. All right, back to it, bro. Yeah. yeah so the question was, um, when was it that you 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 finally did some time? Like when when's your first time you actually got put in? You know, as a juvenile, they kind of get you know probation, whatever, let you go. What was it the first time they actually said they held you in? Uh, in two thousand five, when I caught this, when I caught the charge that led me into this fitness. You feel me? Like that was, that was when like. Everything up until that, when I turned into an adult, like I said, the charges never came. So I was catching the charges while I was on in juvenile. I was on juvenile probation. Then when I turned to adult, juvenile probation was over. I caught an adult case. So basically, in 2005, when I caught this charge, I couldn't make bail because it was a federal charge. So that's when I sat from there. I sat from 2000, December 2005 until... On um, December 2013. And what, what made it a federal charge? Exactly what happened? What you do? Um, let me see what made it a federal charge. The case, the case was, it was a high profile case. Like, 
You know what I mean? Me and the people that was involved, <clears throat> we was targets, you know what I mean? Um, the, the amount that was involved in the case made it federal and, you know, we was running for some years. So like all that tied into the, the, the federal thing, you know what I'm saying? That's what turned to federal. How much time did you do? Uh, eight years to be exact. So throughout those eight years, like, what was your life like in jail? Oh man, it was, it was an experience, man. I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy, you know what I'm saying? But one thing I did learn from it was how to make a bad situation good. You feel me? Yeah. And it's like I tell people all the time, if it wasn't for jail, I wouldn't be a fitness trainer. I, I wouldn't be versatile. You know what I mean? I'm a casket or still serving time. You know what I'm saying? That's the lifestyle yeah. I was into. So while you're in there, what, what was your mindset when you walked into that place? I felt like I was never going to see home. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't see daylight. I, I said, I don't know. I'm just going, because I had I started out with 14 years. You feel me? Right. Like that was my initial sentence, 168 months. So I was like, damn, at that time, my release date was 2019, this year. You feel me? Like that was my max out off of 14. You know, you do 85%. So my get out that my completing the halfway house and everything was 2019. So while I was in there, when I had that time, I just was getting through the days the best way. You know what I'm saying? I found some positive people to, to keep around me, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I used their energy to get through my time. Like, I, I kept people around me with a lot more time than me. You feel me? I'll holler at you. All right. Uh, all right. I, I kept people around me that, that done did a lot more time than me or had a lot more time than me, and I vibed off their energy to, to keep my sanity. You feel me? Right. I mean, I'm looking at these guys who got... They got, I got 14 years, they got 15 in. So it's like, damn, if he got 15 in and he's still walking around strong, strong-minded, it's like, I, I, I gotta be able to be like that. You know what I'm saying? To get through this. Yeah, you know? absolutely. What, what was the most challenging things you had to go through while you were in? The most challenging thing was, uh, one of the most challenging things, to be honest, was I learned, don't trust no one because a friend put me through this. Don't get me wrong. My, my decision making is what led up to this is, but people I believed in or, or, or love some kind of way, try to wipe my, take my life away from me because they got caught doing what they, we all doing the same thing. You get caught. You know what I mean? Why send me up the river or anybody else? And you got caught where your own weight. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that was the, that was the first thing. Like, damn, like, do this friend know that these people are trying to take my life from me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, dang, I'm like, that's what a friend do? You know what I'm saying? So, But, but is that your mistake, thinking that they're able to treat your friends? Definitely. Definitely. So that that's where, that was one of the main things I fought. Like, damn, this was one of my first times dealing with where you can't trust no one. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I dealt with that face on. So that was one of the hardest things then how I'm going to make it to that release date. <laughs> you get yeah. what I'm saying? That was my biggest, my biggest wake up. Like, damn, like, you know, and I adapted. Like I got so used to jail, like it was home. As far right. as like, like the people that I believed in that I got around me, these is my brothers. So you got to build your own family in jail. You know what I mean? Ain't no mom there. Ain't no dad there. Ain't no cousin there. Ain't no brother there, none of that. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, my brothers is the brothers I'm building. Like me and if I feel as though this person vibe is good enough, man, we gonna be here together. You know what I'm saying? So that's where I built. I built the foundation of, of just good people around me to help me get through. So so coming from a situation you came from where you had friends betray you, yeah. and then you go into jail where you really can't trust anybody in jail. Mm-hmm. How difficult was that for you to get that first person or two people to say, I'm going to rock with you? Uh, it, was, it was definitely a bit difficult. Because like I said, like I just seen where, damn, I can't even trust the person I grew up with. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, how do I really trust these guys that I locked up with? But then I was like, well, 
I'm already locked up. And you have so, to survive I, at this point. So you got to be allies with somebody. Day, yeah, like at the end of the day, what can these persons do that I'm locked up with? What more harm can you put me under? You know what I'm saying? Like, so at the end of the day, I'm vibing off of energy. It's like, if I feel this person, hey, man, and I'm just being real. If you, if, and there it was stuff like this, like, you vibe with people that you feel share the same cloth as you. And what I mean by that is, and this person got 30 something years or whatever, he took his time like a man. You get what I'm saying? These is the type of people I got to I gotta vibe around because this is where I stand. I feel like I am. You know what I mean? I took my time like a man. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm owning up to what I did. I'm going to do my time for what I did. Like, I ain't going to pull no, bring nobody in. It, it was never an option. So at the end of the day, that's how I connected with those kind of people. And not saying just because these people ain't snitches or stuff like that. That don't make them straight up people. You had some people who didn't snitch who were snakes. Still yeah. snakes. They, you know what I'm saying? So it's like you really got to read a person before you bring them into you. You know what I mean? And that's that's pretty much what I did. So while you're in there and you and you're going through this process of of looking at what was like the outside world and that coming in and you're you're trying to find yourself, right? Yeah. What was your, what was kind of your aha kind of light bulb moment? Do you like yo? If I do my time in here, what is it gonna look like to me come, come, when I come outside? Like, because you're not being taught anything in jail. You're not transitioning. If anything, you're just adapting to a fucked up, even more fucked up situation. No, but see, but that's the thing. It was plenty. Yo, everything that I got that's on my credential list, man, all that came from jail. So they they do have things in place. For you to make choices while you in there. It's not just because you in jail, everything ends. That was the plus side of it. But you gotta, you gotta be the one to make that choice. Like they got tons of classes from everything. Listen, I got my forklift license in jail. I got my GED in jail. I got college credits in jail. I got my personal trainer license in jail. I got my experience for training in jail. I was training lifers. I was training people with 30 years. 40 years, 20 in, they come into my classes. I'm relieving their stress. So at the end of the day, it was like I really I treated it like I really was away at college. Like I came home with a with a with a list of stuff to make me more powerful when I'm going for jobs. I already got the felons. So you already know that's a, yeah. that's a black, that's a black eye when you walk in there trying to get that job. So for me. I used everything that I learned from in there and I used it as a tool, even though when I got out, I went to every gym possible because that was my love. And that's what I wanted to do. Like, I never worked nowhere. You know what I'm saying? Before I went to prison, I told you my story. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I was catching charges. I never went to work. I, I never even thought about work. That was never an option. You know what I'm saying? So when I got in there, I said, damn, I'm going to have to do something I never did when I get back out. If I want to stay free, I'm going to have to go get a job. Damn, listen to these people. And you know what I mean? I'm not used to that. I just see, you know, I'm like, oh man, I'm used to calling the shots. I ain't used to getting, you know what I'm saying? So was, that was a mental thing, but what helped me get through it, man, was ne I never gave up. Just so surviving. what 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 made you go into the training route? Was it just mm. to save save time or, or just to get out of your headspace? Or what was it? That was a good question. The training route came into See, in prison, you limit it. You know what I'm saying? So the most, the things that people do on a normal day in prison, watch TV, play cards, gossip. I wasn't with really none of that. You know what I'm saying? Because for me, I'm still thinking about the future. So I'm like, man, how to equip myself. So I, I seen that working out was a thing. So I said, damn, let me try that. You know what I mean? Now I'm just curls, pull-ups, and trying to just trying to pass the time, watching what everybody else do. I'm like, I like the workout route, you know what I mean? I got my little shows I watch, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not going to be the popping popcorn watching TV all day, dude, you know what I'm saying? Right. I got I to gotta be doing something. So I start working out, and it was when I start taking it serious when I went from behind a wall to the camp, which is a lower security, you know what I mean? That's when I start reading about fitness. See, before, I, 
I, when I was behind the gate, behind the fence, it was just, ah, we got a lot of time. Everybody trying to, you know what I mean? Wasn't nobody really thinking about personal training, nothing like that. You know what I'm right. saying? So as you, as you went to lower security and you started reading more about it, you know, who, who was that kind of your first client in jail? Um, what happened was a guy that was a friend of mine named Don Juan, DeWan Summers. I would want you to look him up because he's doing great things in DC, man. He got the, uh, the gym, uh, wave going. He's a real estate, uh, guy he does credit. So this particular person was locked up be with me behind a wall for three years. So he went to the camp before me. So when I get out to the camp, he already had a class going out there. Now, his class was different than behind the wall because they was doing stuff with medicine balls, jump rope, just a different type of working out than what I'm normally used to doing and seeing. You know what I mean? We was used to heavy weights and like that. So I used to see him doing these classes and I was like, dang, man, you know what I'm saying? I already knew him. So he was like, uh, man, you need to get to some of these classes try some of these workouts out, man. It's something different or whatever. So I tried it out or whatever, and it was him who was like, man, why y'all here? Because it was me and another friend of mine, you know what I'm saying, that was on the case with me. You know what I mean? He happened to be in the camp as well. So these are two mentors I had. So he was like, um, won't you, why you here? And I'm training y'all. Won't you read into your license? So see, you know what I mean? It just could be something else you could have when you get home. You never know. This is what he told me. So I'm like, man, I ain't going home to try to train nobody. If, like, <laughs> exercise? Like, I'm, I'm doing it for me, but, like, to train somebody? Like, that would really pay my bills and stuff like that? Like, I'm not thinking that far. So I'm like, I'm here doing the time. I want knowledge. I want credentials. Let, let me get these licenses. So I had to send some money out. I sent, like, 300 out into, uh, it was a place called NFPT. It's the National Federation of Personal Trainers. That was a company. You send them the money, they send you the books, and you take the test when you feel like it, after you study enough, you know what I'm saying? So me and my friend, we studied, we did that, and we got the license. Where the money coming from? The money, oh, <laughs> I have money coming in from family support, a few friends, and you can work in there and make money. You know what I'm saying? So you can get a particular job where you might make 80 a month, 20 a month, 150 a month, 200 a month, whatever. So I got my little job and I'm getting some help from the street. So I was able to fund that for the license. And after I got the license, you know, a few months later, I got kicked out to jail. Like everything happened for a reason. I got kicked out to jail. I was still uh, making moves. You know what I'm saying? I was still making moves in the jail, whatever. Got, you know what I mean? People told on me. So I got, when they kicked me out of the jail, I went back to a higher security. You know what I'm saying? I made it all the way down to the camp. When I got kicked out of the jail, I went back up to a higher security and they shipped me to Ohio. So this is where I got. Now, Ohio, that's where I spent my last two years in prison. But in there, this is why, this is one of the reasons why I believe in God and everything happened for a reason, because what I'm about to explain, it was like, it's crazy. So I got my license three months before I got kicked out of the jail. Boom. When I got, when I went to Ohio, as soon as I got there, I'm like, man, I got these licenses. I seen that they had classes and stuff going on. So I took my license to the rec officer that controlled the rec department and asked him, can I do some classes? You know what I'm saying? He said, you got your license? I said, yeah, gave my license, whatever. He said, oh yeah, you could. Gave me a time, some days. So my whole two years there, I'm doing like two, three classes a week. You feel me? And this is when, that was, that was when I got my first client clients but my first client listen to the story my first client wherever he was at he was at a camp too so he got in trouble so when you get in trouble from camps they send you to higher security normally in another state or whatever right me and this guy ends up on a plane together going to all the holdovers together because i left fort dix that's where i was at in the camp which is jersey i went from there to new york for two weeks. I left New York. I went to St. Louis for a night. Then I went to Oklahoma for a week. All these different states and planes and stuff just to make it to Ohio. Damn, you feel okay. me? Yeah. So once I got to Ohio, the same guy I was on a plane with, 
he come to Ohio with me and come to my same unit. You get what I'm saying? So me and him would start seeing each other. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, all right. So he seen I was in a working out. He had a gut on him. You know what I'm saying? So he was like, man, you in shape. I need to work out with you or whatever. So I got to working with him, man. And that was my first client, man. He had a stomach like this. And when I was done with him, he had a six pack. No, he had an eight pack. Wow. I was like, damn. Like, I got pictures with this guy. You know what I'm saying? To show proof. So that's when I was like, and he'll come back from medical because he, he had high blood pressure and stuff like that, cholesterol and things like that. And every time he would go to medical, they'll drop him off some pills. Nice. Like he might have been taking six pills. After a couple months of working with me, he down to four. A couple more months, he down to three. And I remember he was, they had him taking none for for about five, six weeks. But what happened was, being as though we in prison, his blood pressure still go up and down because it's a lot of stress. You feel me? So it, that's still, so they took him, mind you, he was at six pills. They took him all the way down to zero and then put him back on like one. You know what I mean? So that was my first client, my first transformation. And that was when I really was like, whoa, damn. So like, how do you eat in healthy in jail? <laughs> You know, you yeah, working out, right. you get all this, this fitness, you get him to lose weight. Like, you don't have a lot of options. So, the eating healthy in jail part was, you know, of course, in jail, everything, you're going to get the lowest bottom of the barrel, everything. You already know that. So, any of the meat that they cook it in the kitchen, best believe that meat probably be donated fucking meat. <laughs> or meat they couldn't sell, ship them to the jails. And we got to thug it out. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you ain't had no money coming in. Right. So I pretty much was blessed that I wasn't forced to eat that like some of the people I did time with. Like if I ain't choose to eat that, I had some money coming in. I had some help, some support or whatever. I'm able to eat out my locker. And the things you can buy that was health was tuna, mackerel, salmon, Stuff like that. Like, that was the main healthiest proteins. They had wheat wraps. So they had a little selection, if you knew. Right. Because just because they had the selection, not everybody is buying that selection because not everybody is tuned in with the health. So I'm going to the to the commissary. I'm buying everything dealing with the health. You know what I'm saying? As much as possible. You know what I mean? And they always make sure they give you vegetables and fruit. Like that's something they got to do all around the prison, but that don't mean you got to eat it. A lot of people was throwing the vegetables and fruit away, eating all the crap. Gotcha. I'm getting all the lettuce. Give me that. Give me that. Let me get them. Uh, let me get that protein. You want that protein? Nah, we ain't going to, I'm switching the bad stuff for the good. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, you know, I'm making it work. Like, so that's when I started learning. Now I'm reading. So I'm reading like, damn, eat the beans. Uh, Load up on them tunas and max. Get them wheat wraps because I'm reading about it. You know what I mean? So those people that's choosing these things, we kind of standing out because the gel ain't really tuned into the health. People may be working out and stuff like that, passing time, but they ain't really reading and in depth with it. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. So you're in the last two months in Ohio. Two years. Two years in Ohio. I'm sorry, my bad. Two years in Ohio. And you you get to your, your day of release. What is that feeling like? Like, do you do you miss it? Oh man! Does it fuck with your head in a certain way? Oh man! What was the feeling like on that day? Yeah. Oh man, that day was like, man, that was. I don't think it's not too many times in my life that could top that feeling I had that day. You feel me? Because I didn't really think it was true. You know what I mean? Like, I've been programmed for the last eight years of thinking, waking up in a cell around funky feet, going to the bathroom, smelly bathrooms, the nastiest men I ever came across in my life, the nastiest shit I ever seen in my life. It's like, this This was normal life for eight years. You know what I'm saying? That I had to just adapt to this. Like, fuck it, when I go to the bathroom, I already know it might be shit Laying in that in that stall over there. You know what I mean? I just gotta hope ain't nobody in the clean ones. I gotta wipe those down. Like my mind was locked. So it was like that day of release, man. I even feel it now. 
you know what I'm saying? Like talking about it because I remember some of the people I was training walked me to the gate, like, damn, like, you know what I'm saying? Like in tears, like, damn, because I didn't really know how valuable I was to these guys until I was leaving. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I was their get away. I was their stress get away. They can't wait to come to my class because for that hour, you know what I mean? Don't nothing else matter. They 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 working out, they relieving the stress, you know, they they got positive energy. And this is going on every day. And now I'm leaving these guys. And some of these guys got five, had five years left, had 10 years left. So I'm just starting out. You know, I'm like, damn. So you know I'm saying, so they walked me to the fence or whatever and hug, man. We shed some tears, you know what I'm saying? Some laughter or whatever. And that feeling was deep, man. I, I took the, I drove a bus from uh, Ohio to Pittsburgh, from Pittsburgh to Philly, where the uh, federal halfway house was at. And it was a zone, man. Like, I wanted to ride the bus. I could have had a family or somebody come up and pick me up six hours away, but I didn't want to put that burden on them. And plus, I wanted to take that ride to just, like, zone out. So yeah. I got my MP3 player, you know what I'm saying, that they sold in there. And I'm on that bus just driving. And I remember asking somebody on a bus, like, can I use your phone to make a call to let my family know, like, I'm going to be at the uh, train station. And it was like, they looking at me like I'm kind of crazy. You know what I'm saying? So I had to look, man. I said, man, I just did almost nine years in prison. It's my first day out. So they like, oh, calling for me, like amazed and shit. Like, that feeling was crazy. That so, feeling was crazy. So when you came out, the outside world has changed. Nine years is a long fucking time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's technology, all that stuff. So were you, and you was, and you, you was reading all that, which is great. But were you able to really keep up with the times where you're inside or not really? Like, when you come out, she was like, oh, shit, I'm in the future. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was in the future, man. Like, everything was different. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just because, for one, it's, it's a lot of people that wasn't there when I left. Right. You know what I mean? So that already was, like, all my, my, my people I had pretty much really had love for, a few of my friends. Man, they, they got killed in the mix of the bid, or they caught heavy time in the mix of the bid. Like, so it wasn't too many people that was there when I left, there when I came back. You know what I'm saying? So that was a big change. You know what I mean? And adapting was the biggest thing. Like, I find myself five and a half years later still adapting to certain things. You know what I'm saying? It's just like that because a whole life was took from you. You know what I mean? It was on pause. So it's like I had to warm up to everything. You know what I mean? And how hard was it? How hard was it to try to not get in trouble like the last couple of weeks while you were in jail? Like, oh, uh, it was not think about it at all. Nah, it wasn't. It wasn't really uh, hard to not get in trouble because I already had my feet planted. Like, okay, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I had see in there. Like I said, I'm only around people that think that's thinking like me. So I'm not really in the lanes with negative people. You know what I'm saying? And then, so you'll basically just be jumping in front of my lane if I run into a problem with you for real because I'm not even mingling with these kind of people. You know what I'm saying? Like, so that that wasn't, it was no worries about getting in trouble the last couple of weeks. You know what I mean? Because I'm not walking, I'm not walking in trouble. Right. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. When you get to the halfway house, or when you hit taking that long bus ride to the halfway house, mm -hmm. were you trying to think, figure out what you're going to do, or were you just trying to absorb what's going on around you right now? Yeah, I was, man, everything. I was trying to figure out, like, what I'm going to do. Uh, is the gym going to be able to feed the family? I can't see myself doing anything else other than exercise because I never did nothing else. So it's like I can't think of, damn, will I be a, a construction worker for my life? Damn, it's like, it's hard to believe in something that you never even entertained, thought about, or nothing. So it's like, damn, now I got to be one of the ones running around to a thousand jobs trying to get employment. You know what I mean? And this never been my life. You know what right. I mean? My life started from the streets. And when in the streets, I was able to make things happen to put me on boss level. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it was like, I'm, I'm, I, I need something like that. Can I, can, I, can I get home and get straight... Be a CEO or something, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. where I can 
you know, I'm just trying to do, this is what I do. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather be in a position to quarterback, call a shot, something like that. Not So so my transition was hard because I knew you're not just going to walk out and be no CEO or anything or right. be at the top of anything, and then we're felons. So it's like even the little jobs that you apply for, they see that record. You know what I mean? They deny you. I wasn't even able to, to live in certain apartment complexes because I had a record. You know what I mean? It ain't even about the charges. It is what happens is when you're a felon, you can't even live in a complex. You gotta, you gotta, uh, like these multi uh, complexes, you yeah. gotta live in private owns or you gotta own your house or rent from private owners unless you're charged with seven to 10 years clear. So it's some, it's, it's a blockage. Yeah. They make it hard for people with records. You know what I'm saying? To live, make money. You know what I'm saying? So that was that was that was rough. So how long did it take you to realize that, yo, I'm gonna go the fitness route? Did you try to go for the regular jobs and no nah. nah. from the door, I went to every fitness gym possibly could go to. I mean, I went to Planet Fitness for a job, LA Fitness, little moms and pops fitness is all over South Jersey. So what happened was but at the same time, I had friends of mine trying to get me in a job. Uh, it might have been a warehouse job. It may have been uh, doing forklift stuff. But it didn't give me that. Ah. Right. I'm going, in, I'm going there for the interviewer thinking about it with my head down. Because it's, this is not really what I really want to do. Yeah. I'm like, I got to go do this, get slaves for a couple of dollars. Like, this, this is my mentality. Like, oh, man. But... Every time I went to like a, a warehouse job or something, I didn't put my all in try to try to get it because I didn't really want to do it. So I put my all in the fitness centers. Right. So what happened was it was a fitness gym called Giant Fitness. They gave me a shot. That was that was the biggest blessing I got. And I I was on my grind so much when I got to the halfway house. I got that job in like 35 days of being home. You know what I mean? Like that, that was, and, and, and that was crazy because people ain't getting jobs that fast. But I was like, man, I got to make something happen. Like I'm here now. I ain't trying to sit around. Like I'm out there every day. I'm like, man, if the fitness route can work, I'm going to work something over here until I can make the fitness work. Cause that's the only thing I love that's legal. You got what I'm saying? That's so right. it's like, I'm going to put everything in and try to make that work. Cause I want to, I don't want it to feel like work when I'm doing it. I wanted to want it to be, I want to love it. You know what I'm right. saying? Like I love to hustle. You know what I mean? With anything. So I said, I want to do something I love to do. So they gave me this shot, man. And that that was the blessing. That's amazing. So now you have your own fitness company, right? Yeah, like you 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 are an entrepreneur now. Yeah, definitely. How did that happen? How, what, t- take us through the steps and how that happened for yourself. Okay, well, start with Giant Fitness. You know what I'm saying? I was there. I was there for about four months, right? And I'm gonna tell you what was what was so challenging, right? So with the with your license, when you go to be a personal trainer, you got your license. Certain different licenses you'll get an extra couple of dollars for. So I had NFPT and it qualified for 16 an hour. But most gym sessions in gyms, they 30 minutes to an hour. So if you do 30 minutes, you know, you get the $8. So that's how they had their program set up, 30-minute sessions. So, but I kind of misread that. So what I trained, uh, for a short example, I trained four people that first month, right? So that's $16 each person, which I thought, but it was really only $8 each person because it was a half-hour session. So where I'm getting that is my first check. I still got it somewhere around the house. It was $32. Oh, man, I almost fainted. I said, no, this can't be what the fitness pays. Like, oh, I'll (laughs) never make it. It was $32. But then I looked, well, I only trained four sessions. You know what I mean? So I said, damn. Well, and they don't pay you by the hour. They pay you by you got a client. So I was spending eight hours in the gym. Not making no money. You know what I'm saying? Just putting in time, trying to sell myself to somebody. I got a big bracelet on my leg. 
You know what I'm saying? <laughs> sitting in prison. So it's right. like, damn, I got to, you know what I mean? That's already a black eye. You know what I mean? So it was like, I kept pushing in what was my, 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 I thought was my downfall, what was my blessing. The, the guy that owned the gym, he came in with a whole nother company of trainers. So he got rid of all of us. But I was already, like I said, I was thinking about how to get ahead. I was taking people from the gym, working them out in my complex that I got in. Well, that, that I'm not even supposed to be in. I'm not even on the lease, but I'm living in the complex. They don't know. But I'm training in the gym that they had in the complex. And I'm charging them less than what the gym was charging them. You know what I mean? And they liked my training. So I had two people that was like kind of with me at that point. You know what I'm saying? And right. they kind of, they vanished. But because I, I ain't have a set system. You know what I mean? Like, you know, but I went to Planet Fitness and I got the membership where you could bring a person in. Right. And that was where I took off. I was there for eight months, not not working for Planet Fitness or nothing, just going in with that membership, using the people I knew and other people I met during that time. And I'm promoting myself like my I was in shape. So, like, I'm kind of standing out in the gym because I'm doing workouts that not too many people really seen. Because it's coming from the cell. Like right. you know, some of this stuff you could look up on YouTube, but some of this stuff, if you wasn't in the cell doing this, you ain't gonna think of this. You know what I mean? So I'm doing that. And then I'm noticing, like, wow, I got, I got a lot of people coming up to me asking me about this stuff. And I'm like, damn, like, who knows? So while I'm at Planet Fitness, I'm bringing people, I'm meeting people, I'm doing good there. I don't gotta pay no taxes or nothing. Because I'm not working for the gym, so I'm cashing in all the money. I'm like, this is what I believe the trainer's supposed to get. You right. know what I mean? So I'm loving that. And, man, the rug was pulled from up under me. Like, I had a person come to me for help. I'll never forget this. I had a person come, come to me for help. I helped them, show them how to work the machine. And they went and reported to the people at the front desk, like, man, y'all got a guy in here who's training more people than the trainers that y'all have. Like, and they got me out of there. Canceled my membership, but I felt the vibe a little bit before that because I had the owner of the gym coming up to me, nitpicking, saying, um, make sure you're working out with the client uh, so, you know, people don't come down on you. Or he start letting me know that something can, can come from this. So... I planted my feet. I went around to a couple of gyms to see if I can charge to use their space. I mean, if I can pay to use their space. I opened up a couple of doors there. So I said, if they ever pull the uh, the rug from up under me at Planet Fitness, I'm going to go to one of these spots. And that yeah. happened. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's crazy. Yeah. So as you transitioned to that and you started paying for the, for the, for the gym space, what, uh, what, how did that change into your day forming your business? Like how, how consistent were you? How did you start looking at getting more clients to follow your lead? And did the gym see you as a value as well? Pour yourself. Give me one minute. I had to get some water, man. Talking about this stuff. <laughs> My mouth dry. Anxiety all kind of well, you good, man. <laughs> That's but, what's up. Uh, back to your question. Yeah, so when I went to the gym, they had a thing where... They, they working off independent contractors. So he didn't care if I was valuable to his gym. It's like, hey, if I'm going to pay him rent to work at his gym, he don't care what I'm doing because... So it's like a barbershop. You're just paying booth rent. Yeah, I'm paying booth rent. You bring your own customers. Right. You know I mean, so that was a big thing. Like, I couldn't eat off of their land. Like, I couldn't be in there and somebody come in and, oh, I want him to train me. He have to call that shop, the owner guy. So, I, like, I couldn't eat off of what he already had built. I had to eat off of whoever believed in me and whoever I'm bringing in. So, he said, well, look, you could pay me $10 each client or you could pay me $400 a month. It all depends on what, what, what worked better for you. So, at that time, I'm, I'm doing more than 40 sessions a month. So, it worked better just to pay the 400 So, I'm paying 400 from the start of the month. And... We worked so good. I, I did so good over there to where as though he was like, look, instead of paying me the 400 a month, how about we do this? You do three classes for me a week. I give you 100 a week. So that's four weeks in the month. Basically, 
You do my classes, you don't got to pay me nothing. Shit, let's go. You know what I mean? Let's go. And it was crazy because how he believed in me for the classes, he couldn't come a couple times. So he asked me to fill in. Right. I then did a couple classes. The people loved how I did the classes. So he was able to, damn, I could transition him to that. So he had me doing two classes at his gym. And he had me going to a company, driving to a company, training them once a week. And that worked, that man. Good. That worked so good. It was a heartbreak because it came to an end. What happened was his gym fell. And it, it fell because he had bad location and not enough promotion. I, I was seeing this while I was there. So what happened when it was falling, I said, damn, I had to go to the next person where I could pay rent again. I mean, so it's like, wow, like that, that was a mind boggling thing because I got to get people to get back used to a whole nother gym, back used to a whole nother environment. Everything right. changed. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I watched the people that I met from him training his class cry. You know what I mean, some of them cried because they cried because in little private gyms, you become a family. Sure. Yeah. You know absolutely. I mean? We all we all it ain't like big gyms. You know what I mean? We came a family. We all knew each other. We knew each other's family. Like everything was connected, right. and that all got broken apart. So it's like when I planted my feet to move on from there, all the people that he had me train at his classes, they came on to the other gym with me for the classes, and I was like, damn. So now I'm starting to believe, like, whoa, man, like maybe if I can work to get my own space. I could really open up a door and I'm going to make sure I put that work in so we don't have to run into felling and losing or whatever. So uh, while I'm there at this other gym, 18 months later, the same thing happened. That falls. Wow. And that kind of like, like, like having that happen both times, it made me start saying, damn, is this for me? You know what I'm saying? Like, do I got to chase another fill and make this secondary because I do love it, but I got bills to pay. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. damn, I can't keep, you know, everywhere I'm going. And then I didn't want to work for no LA. I didn't want to lock into somebody's structure because I, I feel like I'm too strong on my own. Plus I got a mind of my own. I want to, you know, I just don't have a building and, and everything to, to help me yet. You know right. what I'm saying? Right, yeah. So it's like, I'm trying to rock in with somebody. We'd be a family. We grow together. I could work with them. You know what I'm saying? And as long as we standing strong, because you know, at LA Fitness and stuff like that, you got to follow their protocol. Be there for right. their hours or whatever. And I ain't want to lock into nothing like that. Right. So I kind of shied away from that. I, I said, man, I'll work another job and do my own with my own clients secondary before I lock into something like that. You know what I'm saying? Because I just see me making it down the line. I'm, I'm still trying to have some hope. So what happened was that shut down. And then from there, I said, you know what? I'm not going to put the people that's been rocking with me back through that same, oh, well, look, we in this township now. We at this gym. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to use the Planet Fitness, uh, another one, because I got kicked out of that one. I'm going to use the Planet Fitness or use the LA Fitness or Edge, use the parks. Right. Uh, I'll pull up at your home with all the stuff in my trunk. Like, I'm like that now. Like, I'm just going to get it mobile. You know what I mean? I'm not locking in or nothing because I'm afraid that I may lock it with somebody who can't make sure the business stay open and fell again. Right, right. So at that moment, I'm just bouncing around, doing what I'm doing. And I start looking at spaces, seeing how much stuff costs, what I have to have. And I've been working towards that until I made this happen. So what's, what is this now? So what, what do you have now? What did you make happen? Uh, I got a gym. It's called Versatile Fitness. I've been had the name, you know what I'm saying? But I wasn't able to bring it to the light because I ain't had nothing really going on. I ain't had no building or nothing. So it's like I was just calling myself, you know, I'm Versatile Fitness. You know what I'm saying? I'm at work out on Instagram, but my company name is Versatile Fitness. Whenever I can make that company pop, then that's what it's going to be called. You know what we'll I'm make saying? You come up, we'll make you come up with the name. The name came from jail, and, and I didn't know what name to use, so I would, I would come up with different names, uh, Explosive Fitness, and 
this fitness. So what made me stick with the versatile, I said, damn, that's how I live my life. That's how I always live my life. Versatile, meaning adapting. You know what I'm saying? Being able to re react to anything that's going on. And you, you probably was going left. It's, it's, a, uh, it's blocked. You got to go right. Like, so the versatile is just being able to adapt to anything. And when it comes with versatile fitness, we do all kinds of workouts. You know what I mean? We working on the mental. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, damn, that, that word kind of tie into everything I stand for outside of fitness. You know what I'm saying? So I was right. like, hmm. Let me try that name because I felt like you had to have a catchy name. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, you know, I just didn't want to have anything. So that's where the name came from, like, through the workouts. So, so the space you have now, how big is the space? Oh, you know the, space, the space is 1,500 square feet. You know what I'm saying? And it's more than enough space to get in shape, man. I'm like, I'm surprised I even have it. You know what I mean? Because it's like... It's hard to believe that I could kind of see the dream coming true, uh, but I'm so humble. It's like, I don't even see how far I made it. It'd take other people to tell me because I still feel like I'm at the bottom of the barrel and I got so much room to grow and growth. You know what I'm saying? So, Nah, bro. I've just, your story right now you've been telling is amazing. And, you know, you lost a lot of time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And for you to, to work so hard at what you're doing and love, and you knew from jump, I don't... I don't want to do this. I want to do this. Most people who haven't gone to jail don't know what the fuck they want to do regardless. No doubt. You know and they waste their own time, and then they're kind of in a mental jail themselves. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you had this, this physical space you was locked up into, but you probably did more to, to be successful in that time than anybody else that's outside. Yeah. Real. I noticed that, man. I noticed that because what made me notice that is when I seen, when I came home and I see some People I know, they in the same place as I left them years ago or worse. Yeah. So I'm like, damn, like you've been on the straight all these years I've been gone. Like, you, I shouldn't come home in the first, in my first couple weeks, months home, I'm doing better than you. And it's not to compare or nothing, but it just made me look at like, damn, that's a lot of time wasted, man, with, with you not doing anything. I just did eight years in prison. You know what I'm saying? With no access to nothing. With no access to nothing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So so now you have this versatile gym, right? I, I see the shirt. I love the logo. Thank you. It's, it's badass. I love it. Thank you, man. Um, how long have you had versatile, the, the actual space, versatile fitness space for now? Oh, uh, I got this gym in uh, October last year. Okay. And so how, how's your client base? You feel, do you feel like you're at home yet? Do you feel like, hey, this is a temporary home right now? And what's your aspiration? What's your... What's your What's your idea for the future of the business? Um, this is definitely a temporary home because I'm renting right now. You know what I'm saying? So my, my goal is to own. You know what I mean? So I'm going to use this space now to build the clientele up, to build the company up even more, and to build the credit up. So God willing, in a year or two from now, when I go, I have my credentials straight. So now I can go buy a building. So I got good credit. I built up the company name. I get all kind of loans or whatever I need to do to purchase a building to make really the home. You know what I'm saying? So where I'm at now, this is a temporary home. So you said before you, know, you were doing a plan of fitness, there were some workouts that people wouldn't recognize. Yeah. Do, do you still do that with versatile fitness? Like, do you incorporate some kind of jailhouse? jailhouse oh, exercise? yes. Oh, yes. That's what, empty. What, 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 what does that look like? What is it that you're doing? Um, damn, I wish I could have demonstrated something for you, but, uh, stuff like push-ups, clapping your hands, push-ups, clapping your hands behind your back or whatever, uh, hanging off of stuff people wouldn't even try. You know what I'm saying? Because I used to hang off of the, the bunks. You know what I mean? I was doing pull-ups on a, uh, on a bunk that we had in the cell. You know what I'm saying? Putting uh, socks on my hands so to, to stop the calluses to get a right. grip you know what I mean I had to hold my legs up because I was so the, the bone is right to the ground so I gotta have had the strength to hold my legs up and keep them up straight to hold them inside the bone while I'm pulling from the bed you know what I'm saying so it's like 
It's just a few different things that even if I seen somebody doing, I'm going to say he knows something. Right. You know what I mean? Like, he been putting in some work to be able to, to do that. You know what I'm saying? So how does how's it feel like, you know, you, you get up in the morning, you open your door, you put that key into the lock, man. Oh, you man. That's, that's a great feeling, man. I'm not, I'm not going to lie, man. That's one of the greatest feelings because I'm opening the door. It's like I went from, I look at, I went from having to be swiped in, you know what I'm saying, or something like that to, to popping a key to something. And, and, like, the beauty of it, man, that I love the most, I'm able to help others. You know what I'm saying? Like, meaning as far as outside of me training, I'm, I'm able to help others chase their dream. Like, now that I got the building, it's not all about me. I done hired a few different trainers to do classes and do training at Versatile because I know what it's like trying to uh, hope, hope it don't rain when you got your class on Saturday or Sunday. Okay. I went through that. Damn, got to tell everybody class canceled because the weather. You know what I'm saying? Or, hey, we can't go in that gym because they seen me training earlier and, you know what I mean, the owner might come to me if we go in there at night. Like, so I want to so I feel good to have a door open for those kind of people who were striving like me. You know what I mean, they don't got to go through some of the stuff I went through, you know what I'm saying, because I got the door open for them. You know what I mean, if they want to take advantage of that. You so, you got, so now you have people paying booth rent. Exactly. That's what's up. So where's the hours like your, your gym is open to? Like how, how's, how's your, how, you, how have you structured it? Right now, we here when we got classes or when we got clients. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But... In about a couple of weeks, I'm implement where you can just pop in. And because it's 1,500 square feet, so I'm not really doing the memberships where people just pop and do their own thing because it's it's a small, good setting. And my whole thing for doing it how I'm doing it is in these big gyms, you may, let's say they got 1,000 members, right? They may have 200 members who never even come to the gym in that whole year. Yeah. But they got the membership. Yeah. So it's like, are you benefiting from the membership? Not at all if you ain't going. So my thing was, I wanted to make sure anybody that come in to Versatile is working with an instructor some kind of way, whether you're doing the classes or you're doing the one-on-one -on -one training, because that's guaranteeing the results. You know what I mean? So I'm, tr I'm, I'm locking into that. But, you know, my future goal, of course, when I get the bigger gym, is to have the memberships, but I'm still going to have the making sure you're being instructed some right. kind of way to, to guarantee the results. You know what now, I mean? Now, in the, in, in the exercise world, especially for people who are not really into exercise, they want to try to exercise and get in shape or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. There always tends to be a stigma about trainers, right? So they go in the gym, they don't know what the hell they're doing in the gym, they see the trainer working out, but they're afraid of the cost. Yes. Right? How do you how do you kind of circumvent that situation where you, you tell that you try to sell yourself to that person? Like, you know what? I can train you. I can get you to where you want to go. Because you see a lot of people in the gym. They don't know what the hell they're doing, bro. Exactly. Exactly. And then they get they don't want to get motivated anymore because they don't see the true results. They're not eating right. The diet doesn't match the exercise, or they plateau because they're doing the same shit all the time. Yeah. So how does that? How does that? Like, how do you overcome that? <laughs> What I did was I did my homework on the gyms, the pricing and everything. You know what I'm saying? So I said, I want to put myself, I'm not going to sell myself short because I know what I bring to the table. You know what I mean? Meaning like, it's a lot of great trainers out there. I'm never going to say I'm the best. I'll have clients or, or people say, oh, you, I'm never taking that title. I don't want it. But what I do stand on is, I'm coming different. You know what I'm saying? My drive for the gym is different. This came from prison. You know what I mean? Like, that's embedded in me. So it's like my drive for the gym is a whole different drive than a, a wealthy owner who could just buy a gym and buy some, get some trainers. And he got the, it's, it's different for me. You know what I'm saying? This is, this is my life right here. So it's like, what I did was I looked at the pricing at all the gyms in the area. So I said, where can I come in and still be, have my, make sure I'm not selling myself short, but I'm still there to beat the prices. So I got, how I'm doing it is all my personal trainer package. For example, I got a 160 personal trainer package. 
The one for the 160, you get one on one with me once a week for a month, and you get four free classes that you could go to during a month, whatever one you choose. So that's eight sessions for the 160, four with a trainer, four classes, and I give you a meal plan. Hmm. Where, for example, when I was at Giant Fitness back then, they was charging 160 just for the four sessions, basically 40 each time. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I'm at 160, but I'm giving you four free classes and I'm throwing in a meal plan. You know what I'm saying? So right. all my packages come with four free classes. None of the gyms got that going on. You know what I'm saying? And I stand behind our work for what we doing. You know what I mean? We all natural. You know what I mean? No supplement, no, no, no popping, no pills whatsoever. You know what I mean? That's my drive. Versatile is standing, standing on the natural wave. I'm believing in the original sources of the protein. So, so no protein shakes, no powders. Nah. No nah. at all. It's funny you nah. say that. I started doing that two years ago, bro, because I didn't feel right taking it. It was weird for me. Like my body was reacting kind of weird. And I was uh I was getting more bulky than cut than anything else. See, because the reaction I had. You're 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 a testimony to what I believe in because you're probably the tenth person that said when they take certain supplements or whatever, it it gives them the jitters yeah. or it it does something to them that they ain't they ain't liking that feel. You yeah. know what I mean? And like I said, my all natural wave came from the experience. If I just did eight and a half years, I came home, I could have went straight to Men's Health magazines. I don't have none of the pictures with me right now to show you exactly how I was when I first came home, but I'll get that to you. Yeah. But basically, that was all built outside of me, the tons of other guys that I've seen in prison. Nobody got that from popping pills. Nobody got that from protein shakes. We didn't have it. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So right there, I said, you can't tell me you need pills or protein shakes to get in shape when I just left People ain't none of us having it. Look at us. So that right there, I said, oh, nah. But I seen that, damn, you could sell this to people that make money, yeah. right? right? Didn't want to lie to the people. I'm, 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 I'm believing in, I could have took that whole wave and signed on to one of these companies that been coming at me to sell their stuff or get onto the wave. You'll be a good seller because you train a lot of people. You can make a lot of money. I would have bored into that if I didn't stand on what I believe in. And I would have been lying to the people and making them think, hey, you pop these pills for a couple months, you're going to lose 10 pounds and look like that guy in that magazine. Nah. Right. When you could get it the all natural way, and you don't got to worry about your body having the jitters. You don't got to worry about, oh, uh, well, I feel like that. Or you don't got to go through none of that. Just go the natural way. You get your protein sources from the natural sources, meaning like, I'm going to give you mine. I don't eat no beef or pork. You feel me? So my protein is coming from turkey, fish, chicken. You know what I mean? Um, and I'm not going to never say I ain't never popped protein powder. I did that for a couple of times. But just like you, I never was with the pills. But I was like, I could take the protein powder. I wasn't liking the taste. I wasn't liking. It was certain things. I'm like, damn, like, it ain't blending all the way. Or You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm just like, hold up, man. And you see other people take it. You're like, damn, they make it look good. You know what yes. I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> but I'm taking them like I'm not feeling any different. I don't feel like it actually was working for me regardless. Like it's more just a mental thing. I'm just thinking it's actually working or not. Exactly. And that's where they get people when they locking them into these things. It's a mental thing because I had somebody told me they was on this program, right? Popping the pills. And they said, Wow, the pills gotta work because it's curbing my appetite. I'm not hungry no more. Yeah. The doctor tell you you'll pop certain pills to curb your appetite. But it ain't, you got to read more in depth to see how it's going to kill your kidneys down the line. You know yeah. what I mean? How it's going to, all the damage that it's going to do. You get what I'm saying? So now my protein shakes that I'm drinking now and that I'm about to bring it to the gym is all natural. And how? They're going to have fruits. They're going to have vegetables. And the protein is going to come from either chia seeds or hemp seeds. Oh, wow. These are natural protein sources from herbs and stuff like that. I'm right. going to take my, I'm going to rock that wave. You get what I'm saying? And, right. and, and get away from, and try to get people on this wave and pull them away from that protein powder and that, that crap. Because the protein powder is crushed up pills. Yeah. 
You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I'm just, I'm you, I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to teach the people. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. No, it's crazy important though that like, you're doing right now because people, have, there's, there's a wave that's going on, right? I'm over in Atlanta right now, and people are getting bored with traditional gyms. You know, people are getting bored with the whole, I'm gonna. I'm going to go on the treadmill and then I'm going to just work out with these weights. And now people are looking for more of like, you had the boot camp you know, for a few years type of stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Now you have these kind of circuit training things that's happening in gyms. Like we have hot gyms and stuff like that. Um, and these circuit training with, with groups is not just one person. Yeah. That's, that's kind of like the new wave happening right now. Because yeah. people, again, they're getting bored and they feel like they need to be motivated around other people. Yes. And yeah. that's it. And that's the verse. That's the verse. See, they don't even know they doing versatile workouts. Hey, right. You know what I'm saying? See, everybody, like, like I said, the normal thing in jail was people. When you go to the gym, people run to the bench press. Everybody want to work on their chest. Right. Everybody chase. That'll be the most hardest machine to get on is the bench press machine. There'll be a line to that. The curl bar may be open. The squat, but everybody, that's the main thing. The chest. So. Like treadmill and all that stuff, like how you how you saying people want to do different. So the stuff they doing, they doing the cross training. They got versatile with it. You get what I'm saying? They yeah. got versatile with the workouts. You know what I mean? So with your workouts, like are you do indoor and outdoor? Oh yes. Yes. Springtime is here. Like I got space out back, space out front. So we're gonna be outdoor, indoor, outdoor, whatever the weather permits. So what is what is your plan for the next three years of versatile fitness? What is your goal? Oh man, my goal is ownership. Like I my my, my next goal is owning a building. Okay. So right now I'm in the looks for looking for a building because you gotta you gotta have things locked in ahead of time so you can work towards it. You know what I mean? Like I said, I had I got this building in October. So October of this year, this lease is up. I could renew it. You know what I'm saying? Which if I have to, I will. But if if I done grew enough and everything is lined up for me to buy this building over here and I could do it, I'm going to do that. You know what I mean? I'm going to do whatever I'm blessed to do. You know what I'm saying? But the future for Versatile Fitness is owning a building and having it all set up. I want to have a qualified team that I can lock in with for the for the term of Versatile Fitness. We, the, the plan is the open up another building, buy that building, and then franchise from there. I'm not going to franchise renting. You know what I mean? I want to own one, lock in one. Right. Boom, that's the ownership. Now we can franchise from here. You know what I'm saying? So that's the that's the goal uh, the next, for the next three years for Versatile Fitness. Just growing and owning and, you know, climbing the ladder. As you became this, 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 this trainer, right? Mm-hmm. Did you feel like did the business side come come to you naturally, or did you have to work at that side of it? Oh man, I I, I suffered. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm the type where I may ask a person for some help. I'm not gonna ask you twice. You know what I mean? Like, if I don't know something and I ask a person something, they could have forgot or what or whatever. But I'm just the type. Once I ask you once, and that person couldn't really help me or give me the facts I need, I'm gonna go through the searching, even if I gotta take losses. Till, till I learn it, sir, I'm, I'm going to go through that. You know what right. I mean? Because I just hate asking, you know what I'm saying, people for anything. So I feel like, let me work on my own and learn on my own. If I could get people along the way to help me, I'm going to take that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So as you went through the, the process of learning about how gyms work, like mom and pop gyms, and then the whole Planet Fitness joint where you can't even grunt too loud of Planet Fitness. Exactly. And- <laughs> You know, exactly. and they're serving you pizza and cookies at the front counter. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's kind of just, this is after the money. This is after yeah. that month. This is after that monthly. Definitely. That's And you see, look at gyms now, you know, they're, they're to the point to where they're not really trying to help people lose weight. No, no. No. They, they have that, that season, you know, that season is, is New Year's. That news resolution season happens. Yep. That first two or three months of the year is, is booming. But then after that, it kind of is, there's tanks. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, with, with your style of, of trying to get people working out in an all natural way, how has, how has your clients responded? Like, what was their response to it, man? Oh, man, they love it. Like, it was crazy. All my clients that I had, that I started out with when I first got out, 
they still with me now. Wow. You know what I'm saying? They are still with me now. And that's because, like, outside of training, character is everything. You know what I mean? You don't want to just have a trainer that you can't, you can only get the workouts from, you can't talk to them, you know? Like, being a trainer, it's not just the workouts. Like, me and my clients vibe on all kind of levels. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like I'm their mentor as well. You come, you come to the gym to not only get in shape, but you're relieving stress. You know what I'm saying? You're getting your thoughts. People don't understand. A constant, consistent pace of working out can bring a lot of ideas to your brain, a lot of positive energy, because you're releasing the, the bad energy. You're releasing the negative thoughts. You're releasing the doubt. And you're releasing the doubt because it's like, wow, I was 180. In a couple of months, I'm down to 170. You work to that. Right. I may have trained you, but you had to listen to me and follow the workouts and still do stuff on your own to reach your goal. So it's teamwork. You know what I mean? So I'm at the end of the day, I'm their mentor as well. A, a real qualified trainer becomes your, your mentor as well. I'm not just get in here, do 10, do 12. I'll get down there and do it with them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll push them. You know what I'm saying? Well, 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 in whichever way. Has has your journey at any given time, and you know you, you, did, some, you did a lot of time, have you, ever, have you ever felt like your journey was just, you was meant to go to that? In order to yes. get to where you are now? Yes. I, I really I really locked in on that because I say, I say just now, like, let's say if I didn't go to prison. Yeah. Where, where would I be if I didn't go to prison? And all I could think is, damn. Would I even be alive? Right. That's my thing. You know what I'm saying? It's like, because back then, you know, you get caught up in a federal case, you running with a money getting crew. Yeah. I mean, the feds, the feds ain't thinking about the, 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 you know what I'm saying? People that don't got no power, that can't, you know what I'm saying? Back then, like, it's, it, it may be like that way now, and they just filling up the jails. So right. they, they'll grab anybody to, you know what I mean? It, it don't matter. But back then, you you had to be among some, you know what I'm saying? So I look at that like, man, damn, I could have been gone. I could have still been in there. Like I didn't even get to put that into you. Now, remember I told you I started out with 14 years. Yeah. Only did eight for a reason. Now it was crack law. I had a crack charge. Okay. So when Obama got elected, soon as he came in, he passed the crack law. That knocked off the crack law dealt with uh, in short terms. The first time they passed it, I got two years knocked off. So I went from 14 to 12. That's when I'm like, whoa, like, damn, it's, 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 it's crazy. My release date is just a little closer. At that time, I got that two years off in, in 2009. So my release date was instead of uh, the end of 2018, it was the end of 2016. So I was like, damn, it's two years off, but it's like, shit, it's 2009. I can't see that. <laughs> I still got a stretch. Right. So fast forward, I do two more years. So in 2011, they redid the crack law. You feel me? Which knocked off another two years for me. So it got, I went all the way from 14 to 10, and I did the eight. So what happened was with me getting them, them reductions, I said, damn, like it was meant for me to be home before 2000, into 2018. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And I look at them in the years that they took off what I accomplished, what I built when my life wasn't even supposed to start until a couple months ago. You know what I mean? So that's why I say some stuff be meant to be. Now I feel like I went through that. God blessed me and he blessed me with a vision to help others. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Throughout the world, through health, and fitness, you know what I'm saying? Man, that yeah, this is a badass story, brother. Like, <laughs> Thanks, man. This is a true come up story on the real, and you and you still rocking and rolling with it, and and that's amazing, man. Like you touch, like you said, you touch a lot of people's lives. You know what I'm saying? You're making things happen, and you, you know, you, you had, this story is amazing because man, it's, it's mad people who are not in jail. Like I said earlier, like they're just struggling mentally. Yeah. They yeah. fucked up. In the, they just fucked up in the head. Don't know what to do, how to do it, you know. And they didn't, they didn't take a chance on themselves. You took a chance on yourself. Definitely, man. You know, you you went inside, did did your bid, and was like, all right, I'm gonna go get my education somehow, some way. 
And it was just, it was education you wanted to get. Yes. You select exactly what you want to do. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And you came out with this, like, yo, I don't want to work at a warehouse gig. I, I know exactly what I want to do. So if I got to say no to shit, I'll take it. But you know you was going to be your 100%. No doubt. No doubt, man. You know what I'm no saying? Doubt. So for you to be, for you to prosper now in what you're doing. So how long altogether have you been like for training? How many years now? Um, well, outside and inside or? Just outside. Um, five and a half since I've been home. I, like I said, I, I got to the halfway house. You, in, in federal, they let you go to the halfway house six months, three to six months before you, you really out. So I got to the halfway house um june 2013 i got out of the halfway house in december but in june you know like i was on a bracelet and stuff like i i got told you in 35 days i got the job you right. know what i'm saying so i was on the ball i was on the roll get got the ball rolling from the start right. and just the the main thing of the story just never give up man and pursue your dream you feel me no absolutely you're absolutely right because you already were low. It was yeah. like, you already started at the bottom. Yeah. There was only one way to go. Yes. That. Exactly. But when you came back, when you came back, was it, you know, you came back to Jersey, right? South Jersey. Was it hard for you to not look at home as, well, this was the shit I got into. And, but it could, it could be very easy for you to fall back into shit again. You already know. You know what I'm saying? So did that ever came to, to, to play a little bit? Like, did you have to kind of push it away? Well, you know what I'm saying? A lot of thoughts come to mind. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, that's really, that was really all I knew. Exactly. You get what I'm saying? So it's it's hard for a person when you know they got to go back to their same environment and work themselves out of that shit. You feel me? Like it's a fight. It's an everyday fight because it's more of a fight mental because you know what you can do. You know what I'm saying? And different things like that. But I noticed the more I put in with this, it's just like more that door is opening. Right. You know what I'm saying? The more because I didn't even think about the clothing brand. Like, like people used to tell me when I was just running around doing stuff, like, man, sell some shirts or do stuff. And I was like, man, I don't want to be selling shirts and I don't got no building. Like, I didn't want to <laughs> be, I want them to see that. Oh, you got a gym? I want to be like, yeah, it's, it's that. I ain't want to just be selling shirts and it's coming, it's coming. Like I said, man, I'd rather wait until I plant my feet in the building and give them all, give it to them all from the building. You know what I mean? So now it's like I've been blessed. Like the clothing line is is, is popping, man. It's, it's, it's being blessed. It's, I'm growing in it. I'm learning more in that zone. And I'm like, damn, like I wasn't even thinking this wasn't part of the plan. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I'm just taking whatever blessings God put in my path and operating. So what kind of clothes do you have? Obviously your t-shirts. What what else do you got? What's, what's your got, merch like? Look. I got um sweat suits, my track suits, uh I got leggings, uh tank tops. I got so much coming, you know what I'm saying? Like this week. Like I got uh like I said I got the t-shirts, I got the sweat suits. Man, I'm gonna do everything versatile fitness, man. I do got you, the do you have a website yet? That's what I'm working on. Like okay. right now, right now what I'm doing, I uh, got the website being built. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting that all structured. But what I'm doing, I'm, I'm mailing stuff out through, like people may send me their P.O. box. Okay. I'm saying cash at me the money, I send you the sweatsuit. You know, right, right, right now I'm working it like that. Like pulling up or you can come to my gym or I'll mail it to you until I get the website where you can order it and still do the same thing. So every, up, bro. you know what I mean? Everything is 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 coming. Yeah, you're really killing it, man. You're killing it. You have your plan, bro. That man. that's awesome to see because as, as minorities, man, you know it's it's tough. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you come out of jail, that's that's even adds ten more fucking bricks on top of your back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And for you to come through that, that's a fucking story. That's a badass story you got, man. Like like that that's truly some inspirational shit you got going on. And you need to know that, you know, you fucking, you're valued, bro. You know what I'm saying? You have a lot of value to you, man. Thanks. For real. And what you bring it to people, like, especially, you know, minorities, like, we don't eat the best. Yeah. You know what I'm we always frying something up, you know, everything's fucking fried or some kind of starch. 
you know, we always go for that easy, like, you know, pre-made shit in the supermarkets. You know, we, we always avoid the fucking produce section. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You, you, we, 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 uh, we pushing out the main thing that can help. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Because exactly. we not woke to it. We, we live off of taste. And that fried chicken tastes good. or that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's addictive as fuck. It's, it's just like having a drug. We take a drug. You yes. know what I'm saying? And when you when you finally kind of like treat your body right, it does take time. You, you do go through fucking withdrawals. Yes. <laughs> you know what yes. I'm saying? But once you pass those three, four weeks, yes. your body already freaking kind of resets itself. Say, no, I don't need that salt, that sugar. Like, it even tastes different after you fucking have it for the first time after a few weeks. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? You're not, you're not craving it no more. You know definitely. what I'm saying? So, by you teaching people like that, that's that's huge, man. That's definitely, definitely huge. Because you can still have that. Yeah. You know I, listen, I all I'm not never one gonna be one of them trainers. Uh don't eat no no pizza. <laughs> Mod, moderation and cutback. See, I I teach my people, we dealing with moderation and cutback. We ain't dealing with never. Right. You know what I mean? Because you're never gonna just not eat this or not, you know what I'm saying? Just in moderation. You don't gotta have the whole pizza. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because it's there. Exactly. Pieces. Yeah. I mean, then you got to know the timing. Yeah. Don't eat two big slices of pizza while you laying in bed and going to sleep on it. Yeah. It's, it's going to go right to your gut. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So those be the times you got to make better choices. You got to know when, you know, that's, that's when you come in, you hire that qualified trainer who's going to teach you how to work out and how to eat. And however long you with him, you got to take in that knowledge. So now when you feel as though you don't need him, you still got the blueprint that can guide you through your life. You know what I mean? And that's all I'm trying to do. I'm trying to give people blueprints to follow. Give me some kind of things to look at. If I'm looking for a trainer, right? I, I went to the gym I, you know, a bunch of times. I haven't lost weight. I see people working out. I'm kind of interested. What should I look for in a trainer? What you should look for as a trainer is, for one, I'm always going to say look for a trainer that look like he work out. Because I'm going to tell you what I see that's going on. You got a lot of people that's just getting a license, see that a lot of people don't know what's going on, and they talk that talk to them. So they may they may get the license and jump onto a, to a supplement company and do a little workout, add on a supplement company. Now they're going to sell it to you. So look, you want to get in shape, uh, pop this, do this, do that, whatever. They, it's a lot of that going on. Don't buy into that. You already woke to that. You know what I'm saying? Right. So you already know not to buy into the supplement when we eat. Once you run into a trainer and they talking that, my opinion, that's not the one you want. You want the all natural, one, the one that's pumping that in your head. And then you want the trainer that's teaching you like outside of all natural wave, he got to look like he know what he doing. At least look like you know what you're doing. Because I know a couple people who are not in shape, uh, man, but can get you in shape because they have all the knowledge. But you don't know what's in their head. You get what I'm saying? So right. it's like to, to really grab a person, they got to be able to look at you and like, man, that guy got to know. Even if he don't know, he look like he know. So right. go with that person that look like they know something. And then you... You always got to be able to do your homework on a trainer. So why they training you or whatever, and they telling you certain forms, do your own homework. Look on YouTube, a bunch of videos, like to see what's the proper form for the squat, how I'm supposed to be breathing. A lot of trainers don't teach their clients how to breathe. That's the, that's the strength. Yeah. You, in, you inhale on the work. So if I'm doing a pull up, I'm going to inhale when I'm pulling up. Blowout coming down and you carry that same breathing technique through the whole workout. Inhale when you're working. Exhale while you, when, you know what I mean? You're not working. So right. if I'm trying to sit up, I'm breathing in on a come up. I'm going to blow out coming down. Right. That's a big part of exercising. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, make sure you, you, you'll look up on YouTube, good qualified trainers and everything they do. So now with me giving you a blueprint and you watching that, now when you're going into these gyms, you already got some homework. You ain't just whatever following whatever he tell you. You know what I'm saying? Right, so, right. You know what I mean? That's my main thing. That's what's up, man. Like, hell, I think I think that's the move for me next, man. Like, I know I've worked out for a lot of years, got some results here and there. 
but not the true like end goal that I always wanted. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's where people kind of get they kind of get settled in at because they'll see a little bit of result. They'll lose the 10, 15 pounds, and it yep. does make a difference, no doubt about it. Yeah. But then they kind of just stop after that. Or the plateau and the plateauing just gets some kind of discouraged. I can't for like it's been years, like you know, years in the past where I put plateau and I would get discouraged, like, damn, what am I doing wrong? Like, I've been killing it. You know, I feel I feel it, but I'm like, nothing's happening. But it comes down to lack of knowledge of, of the exercises, right? Because exactly. You know, I'm not I'm not I'm not gonna know everything. I'm not gonna say how I'm gonna challenge myself next. I'm just looking at the traditional gym, all those Schwarzenegger freaking weights, and yes. that's it. Yes. So then I see some classes how like do I want to really jump on a step? You know like, what I'm saying? Like, you know, so some people are like, I get to look at what works what works for you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm and I think when you have a trainer, you gotta let them know, hey, I don't like this one. It's it's okay to say oh, I don't like this exercise, you got something else for me. Like I think people need to really be honest with that. Also accept what the trainer has to do as well, though. It's like it's a fine dance. You gotta dance with your trainer, you know what I'm saying? And be like bring let letting yourself be open to t- to take on the exercise and it can guide you. On top of when you start getting the knowledge, work with them and say, yo, I feel this more this way. Or I feel this more this way. Like can we work on something else and and challenge your trainer and come up with some new shit? So yes, yeah, so that's my thing. You got to make sure your trainer is switching up the workouts after a while. Yeah, you know what I mean, is he keeping me locked into the list? Because at the end of the day, the trainer has more knowledge in on knowing what works for what your goal is. You right. get what I'm saying? So I may come across a couple clients who they don't like this certain exercise, but you know why they don't like it? They not comfortable. And that's when we elevate, when we do something we're not comfortable doing. If I just have you doing what you normally do, why you need me? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm here to, 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 to break you out of your comfortability. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm going to take you through a bunch of different joints. You know what I mean, versatile. I'm representing a brand alone, but every trainer should change up the routine after four to five weeks. The body adapts. Right. It'll stop growing if it ain't doing nothing new. You know what I'm saying? So you 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 on the right track with that. And as well, another thing I want you to do when you find a trainer is um let him guide you. Meaning, you know how you say, like, you might want to, oh, you don't like this or whatever. Do that stuff. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, only time I think you may need to speak up to the trainer if you went six weeks and you came two to three uh times a week. And every time y'all did the same exact routine for the whole time like no switch up it's never no switch up it's you know got to keep it exciting too absolutely yeah. absolutely no you're definitely right about that man like but that's, that's why i think people don't do enough education on themselves about trainers either yeah they kind of expect sometimes expect too much exactly <laughs> exactly you know, when, when it's really it's really you the person is exactly. responsible for yourself exactly I, I only can do i only can tell you what to do and i only can train you when you come yeah, you know, life outside of here. I, you know what I'm saying? So I gotta hope you being real with me. Are you following what I gave you 90 percent, or are you following it 10 percent and then asking me why the scale ain't changed? Right. You get what I'm saying? Like, be real, cause I'm not going. I'm not going to lie to you about nothing. I can know when you following a program. It it is show. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? It, it's a automatic. Anything you're doing consistently, and you put in all you can put into it, you're gonna benefit. You know what I'm saying, man? No, absolutely. I think that's the other thing, too, I think is cost, right? So pricing. Mm-hmm. And this is how me and my wife had put it to where we were like, yo, we can either end up in an emergency room, right, get sick, pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to the hospital, trying to get us well again. Not even well. This is going to be medicine, right? Mm-hmm. Or we could spend another two, three, maybe $400 a month on our health. And get ourselves freaking healthy, so we're not spending hundreds of thousand dollars when we shouldn't be sick at that point anyway. Hey, listen, boy, I love. I wish you was up here. <laughs> I wish you was up here because you got the mindset. Like that's that's how you got to view your life. Like, see, on, on, with the training thing, when when it when people line up their bills, and you got to start cutting back on stuff. The first thing people go oh, the gym. Out, it's the it. gym. Yeah, they're gonna throw out the training in the gym because they're gonna say, "Man, I still gotta work and do all this." But you know how many times I've seen people who may have been a number one worker at a job, 
But if they gain too much weight and they can't be as flexible as they used to, mm-hmm. they downsize them or yeah. get rid of them. Yeah. See a lot of that happening. You, If you can't perform, like it's like if I got a gym. I'm just using me for example. I got a gym. I hired a trainer. Five years down, now you've been putting in work. Five years down the line, you done grew this gut. Now you can't move as, as you used to. You're not as much, as valuable as you used to be to the customers. Damn, but little Tommy over there, he's energetic. He how you used to be. Right. What the company is going to, they looking at Tommy over there. He, yeah. You, know, you got to always have your, you know, your mojo. You know what I'm saying? So Absolutely. That's, that's big. No, it's true. I think people need to see more value in in the gyms or 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 spaces like yours. You know what yes. I'm saying? To where, again, like if I, I'm not gonna pay five hundred dollars or two fifty to an emergency room. Yes, I'm just, I'm just not. I'm not gonna sit there and pay this this crazy doctor bill that I'm trying to avoid now. When I know I could have did all that by just following your fucking meal plan, getting down with you like you know four or five times, six times a month, and then make sure it happen on my own. You yes. know what I'm saying? So it's like. This is where I think the mindset really has to come down to be to be indifferent. Because at the end of the day, right, right now, bro, is that between the high blood pressure, like you mentioned, right, also with diabetes, you know, it's it's huge. It's huge that we don't we 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 we're just comfortable with the status quo. You know what I'm saying? We're comfortable with just taking the medication, and the medication works, then I'm good. And that shouldn't be the case. The case should be that let me get off this medication. You know, let me let me get my body back. Let me take ownership again. So we'll have these issues, you mm-hmm. know, and knowing that to your point, you said that, you know, we're putting poison in ourselves a thousand percent of the time. Yes. You know, if you look, if, if, I remember growing up in Brooklyn, right? We would go to the supermarket. There weren't a lot of freezer section stuff back then. You know what I'm saying? Everything was like kind of either canned goods or produce and then you had your proteins or whatever. You go to your Walmart now, you see hours and hours of frozen section. You know what I'm saying? It's, and the produce section is not that big. Yes. And the bread section is bigger than the produce section. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And then you got all this, all this, you know, salted, you know, pre-made food already that's in the freezer that's quick to make, no doubt about it. It saves you time. But then people don't know what, what season it is and what, what vegetables or fruits to do with the fucking seasons. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, if you don't move with the seasons, then what are you doing right now? Because when you get strawberries all year round, it's a fucked up thing. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I love strawberries, but what happens when it's squash season? Like, it forces you to try to tr- switch up your meals as well. Yes. And think differently. And yes. eat differently. You know, yes. so I, I, I love spaghetti squash now. I throw some little fucking pepper, some good olive oil, put that shit in the oven, a little bit, a little bit of sauce, and you're good. I love yes. spaghetti squash. You know what I'm saying? And the vegan, the vegan, the vegan way of doing things, what, I, what I've noticed now is that, you know, my own diet, my wife's diet, we've gone to more of a, a beef-less kind of diet. We eat a hell of a lot of chicken. Um, so we're probably getting tired of it right now. We have a lot of fish, right? Um, but fried red meat, we haven't bought that probably three, four, five years now. You know, so that's not just on our, our, our menu plan. Um, but we've gotten heavier more on a pasta. And I said, okay, well, if we get this pasta, do we really need the red sauce with it. Like I said, you have to switch it up and see what kind of thing you'd be healthy with. Now we're doing more of a Mediterranean style with a lot more olive oils, good fats, and just different tasting stuff. And then I think that's how you have to switch that up also with your exercise. Yes. Like you're not switching it up in your meal plan because your food can get boring too. Definitely. And that that's what changes you to try to go for it. Like, no, let me get the popcorn. I want to switch it up. Or let me go back to the heavy butter shit again. Yeah. And when you're working out, you know, if you're going to change every four or five, six weeks your workout, then change your diet, your meal plan too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you definitely. know what I'm saying? Because you, you have to. You have to you have to switch everything up. It keeps things it keeps things like fucking, you know, brand new for you. Yeah. If, if, yeah. if, you're, if you're fresh yeah. again. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because we all we all have like this short term memory loss and we're like, you know what? Like my my, my mother passed away from Alzheimer's. Oh, right? right here. And it could have been from a number of things. It could have been her not being active reading or definitely could have been from a lot of things from diet. You know, she she drank a lot of diet Pepsi. <laughs> that yeah. was her thing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? She didn't exercise at all, you know, uh, unless she had to walk somewhere because she never drove. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But other than that, the diet was just, you know, fried food. You know, a lot of rice, because we're Puerto Ricans, so it's rice and beans. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And it's, it's heavily salted, though. So it's like, yeah, I got the protein from the beans, but there's a bunch of salt in it. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes. So we all suffer high blood pressure. Like, it's always like, when you get older, you're like, what do I do next? How can I switch it up? Even though I've been taught all this crap. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's, it's insane. Like, like what you was just speaking on, like, my mom died from, she died uh, last year. You know what I'm saying? Health, health issues. So it's like, we, you know, we brought up on everything fried and salt and stuff. So I say, like, let's just imagine, I look, I'm going to just use her, for example, if, if I was able to train her or get her from the habits that she had growing up that everybody has pretty much coming up with the, when it comes to the eating, she could have got some more years of living. Yep. I mean, people don't understand once you do you doing something for 30 years straight or 40 years straight like some of our people yeah you know what i mean all constantly bad shit to your body of course when you 50 60 40 or something whatever it's going some some something's coming down the line you know Absolutely. what i mean you know it, it's just this is where people don't understand this is where a lot of the cancer is made yeah these foods constantly put them in your body You're not detoxing it's just sitting in you you know what I mean? So it's like, it's a lot that come into that. You know what I mean? Like, the new thing is that I hate, which is all these women getting their bodies done. Yeah, man. And I'm, I'm, I'm totally against that, man, because it's like, it's like, what's what comes next? Are they letting you know after you get the body done, you still got to work out and eat good? You, you, it's no getting around it. Exactly. I spend five grand or even more, however, whatever it costs for two months of looking like the magazine and a couple months later, you wish you ain't spend that money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, that's just pure D laziness and not wanting to put in time getting that knowledge. You don't have to go under no knife and no surgery to look better. You know what I mean? You that to- people, people want to have that fast food mentality. Yes. They, they want that instant gratification now. Yes. And like yes. you said earlier, that there's no shortcuts, bro. No and, shortcuts. But people are taking these shortcuts, and look what's happening. They're looking retarded. Your ass don't match your thighs. What's going on? Yes. <laughs> you yes. Know what I'm saying? Your, your, your chest is way too big for your shoulders. Like, what's, what's going on? Yes. Your back, your back is small. You yes. know what I'm saying? So, it's, it's even, you know, even for men, men are getting the calves done. You know, it's it, it's weird how that that's that switching up where they're putting shit in the chest to make the chest look bigger. Or like in Brazil, they they shoot them them arms up. Their arms are huge in Brazil. Like, yeah. But their chest is mad small. Like they ain't working nothing out. You know what I'm saying? So even for the men, it's going that route. That's you know crazy. what I'm saying? And to your point, going on natural, just working out. You got to be a certain person. Not everybody's gonna fucking do it. You yes. know what I'm saying? And, and for you finding those people. That's the best thing, because yes. that honestly, that you're working in your zone. You yes. know you're making money in the zone that you're in, and you you fucking with the people that you know is gonna fuck with you. Yep. Plain and simple. And the people who do drop out, that's gonna be their loss. Yes. On the straight up, that's gonna be their loss. They'll come back to you maybe a year from now, fifteen months from now, and be like, "Yo, I used to get back on a horse." You're like, "Well, I have no problem taking your money. It's all up for you." You know what I'm saying? Like, we can we can we can ride and die together with this, or you can just come through for a couple months and then. Be out. Yeah. At the end of the day, you're a business. No doubt yep. you want to help people, but at the end of the day, yo, you gotta keep it moving. You gotta yes. get that next person. Yes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes, so, man. man. This has been a great convo, bro. Oh man, definitely great. I don't even feel like it was two hours. It was so great, man. <laughs> great, right? <laughs> that was special, man. Yo, we're gonna I think we're gonna leave it at that, man, because yo, you're super dope, bro. Like, oh. you know, just um seeing the smile on your face, just seeing your brand, you know what I'm saying, seeing what the hell you're doing is it's it's crazy dope to see someone come through the story that you have, and the end result is a positive one. Definitely, because many of our people don't have that. No doubt. You know what I'm saying? And for you to do that and ha- have exactly what you want to do in life, there's mad cats ain't doing nothing. They dream it, but yeah. they ain't executing shit. And you're executing every fucking day, bro. True. So, True, man. you um appreciate that. You're inspiration, bro. Don't let no one tell you different. I appreciate that, man. I just want to leave you with, man. Hey, I'm going to recommend anybody that want to do a real podcast and talk because you know how to, like, ask the right questions. You you know what you're doing. And I just want to, like, let them know uh, if they want to uh, check me out, um, Anthony McFadden on Facebook, uh, Versatile Fitness on Facebook, and Workout on Instagram, 
and a website coming soon, man. Look out for Versatile Fitness on the rise. Yep, I'm gonna put all these all these links in the description, guys. So you guys definitely be able to link up with Anthony. And um, if you're local in Jersey, in South Jersey, man, you know, get at your boy. Yes. Get at him. Check out Versatile because we need a bigger space. You know we need we need three thousand square feet. We got fifteen hundred. We want to double it. We want to get it. Let's you know get saying? it. And go to the spot. And if you want to get geared up, go buy his merch. Get ready for the summertime with Versatile Fitness. Man. We'll leave it at that, bro. All right. Much appreciated. Bro. <laughs> right. Nice talking to you, man. Yo, you're the bomb, bro. We're going to keep Thanks. in touch. All right. You too, man. Take it easy. All right, man. Peace.